Welcome to number 22. 22. So guys, I um, I made that series of, of shorts. And if you get a short out of this one, it's going to be my last short to try to advertise my channel because or until my next Mania episode. I just got cut up. Just cut up having fun and trying to get attention. But that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work. And it was taking away from my my process because I was getting too involved with trying to see what kind of thing can I do to get attention to get people to come to my site. Realizing that they're not even going to but we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to worry any longer about getting views. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to renounce seeking views right now. Because my focus is to leave information for my grandchild. That's my focus. I got carried away in a delusion of grandeur. <laughs> I'm super cool. Please, everybody, come see me. That's not what I went. I just got excited because I was... What did they say? I was fooling myself a bit. So, please forgive me. I'm going to try to be straight lace as best as possible. Try not to do that. Until I at least have an audience. <laughs> or... Maybe hope that I don't even get any views. Don't, 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 don't come here yet until I have five more books uploaded. Then I'll let you see this side of me. But oh well, Sailor Beats, not the way it turned out. It is what it is. Two minutes have been wasted. I'm not, I'm not worried about it anymore. I was just having fun trying to see if I couldn't try my ideas to see if they would work. And they don't. <laughs> Page 97. The argument against the concept of brainwashing is that people cannot be converted to believe something which is totally alien to them, and the belief certainly cannot be sustained when the individual is back in an environment where that belief is not commonly held. However, most conversions are in some part voluntary in that of the con convert. Mm, sorry. However, most conversions are in some part voluntary in that the convert is looking for something to believe. And has been shown the beliefs, far from being alien, reinforce his own and fulfill his needs. A young person may be saved from the Moonies, and he may become and he may come to despise their teachings himself. He rejects the trappings, but unless he comes to question why he held or he had believed instead of what he had believed, well, that's a good one. He may well continue to seek the absolute answer and accept it in different clothing. That's very true. We've talked about that slightly before about trading one thing for another. There is a tendency to eulogize the gut reaction or to imbue events with significance if they arouse emotions. As soon as I saw him, I felt his presence of peace, or when I heard his words, I was suddenly deeply moved. The experience of the emotion then justifies belief in whatever aroused it. Holy shit, that's good shit. That's some good stuff right here. I didn't want to freaking get all of that. I just wanted this much to question not just what you believed, but why you believed. And a lot of the atheist YouTubers are really questioning and mocking up what they believe. But they don't go so much into their personal story. In fact, it's, it's a little maddening, but they have their own script, and if you listen to enough of the videos, you'll be able to see 
where they're taking the same script off of each other and regurgitating the same ideas. But as you look around a while, one thing I see, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't, I don't want to defend my accusation, but I'll, I'll, I'll see him say this, this, and this, but he, it's, it's more like clear, true, clear, true, clear, true, and then he'll say something that is obviously taken in a misconception to be mocked, and I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time digging out such arguments. I just want you to to just listen clearly when you when you listen and think about what they're saying. But they have to understand why they believe, not just what they believed. The experience of the emotion then justifies belief in whatever aroused it. As has it is hoped been sh as has it is hoped been shown, emotions can be aroused by many means and for many reasons other than what is immediately apparent. As psychotherapists well know, many of the emotions that patients feel towards them are in fact emotions felt towards their parents or their spouses, or whomever and whichever were never expressed. Similarly, when a man says to a woman he meets, you remind me of so-and-so, he often proceeds to react toward her as if she were the woman she called to mind. Emotions may not be such trustworthy barometers for behavior. If the emotions aroused are emotions that belong to a past occasion instead of a present one. Thus, fear of rejection, experienced once, may color all one's future encounters. So true. <laughs> and unconditional um, and unconditional offers of acceptance may equally color one's judgment. Our need to seek pleasure and avoid pain makes us susceptible to the manipulation of both positive and negative emotions. What sounds simple and obvious in black and white is in fact complex and obscure when our emotions are successfully disguised from ourselves. We're on chapter 6 now. Attitude Influence. And so the first three statements here are in italics and she's quoting from before where she listed out the things necessary to do the brainwashing. For instance, remove, removal of their leader left them without a clearly defined authority structure and weakened group cohesion. The bad guys, by placing their demands and only making large requests after being granted small ones, imperceptibly won their commitment. They were forced to participate in their own indoctrination process by writing statements or organizing camp activities. Need for friendship and approval led them to comply with their jailers. Make a small point here on need for friendship. We all need somebody to confide in, right? But yet, sometimes we get very eager because when somebody likes us, we immediately want to go all in with this person and share your entire soul because of isolation, loneliness, hope, breadcrumbs, all these things that the hurt people, and me, because I'm one of those hurt people, experience, which makes making friends very hard. One must first, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times, be comfortable with your own company. Stand up to your own scrutiny. Be okay. Understand that who you are, a 
has nothing to do with what they think and put at you. Yeah, obviously, unless it does. If somebody points out what are your flaws and you know it to be a flaw of yours, then fix it. But do never assume a flaw that they put on you. No, no, no. Don't make something part of your identity. Know your identity. Take your information. But what I was saying about that, I myself, this last week, being all hyper, making all the videos, trying to see if I could get approval, get someone's good opinion. Um, so I went a little over overboard and hyper. And what it ended up doing was giving me more fantasies about doing this taking me away from my purpose for one and for two there was somebody I wanted to make friends with but I was so over eager and they are also a hurt person that I came off wrong on her <sighs> so mourning I'm in mourning basically But, for me, my solution is understand the part I played in being too eager. Understand that my practice, um, what happens to be my religion, is, is to let go of expectations and desires. And one of the Zen teachers talked about calm mind isn't supposed to be seeking ramifications. So basically, I'm real convicted over that. Seeking ramifications, meaning I'm trying to get to be a YouTuber, get the people to like me. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be putting my imagination on that. That causes suffering. That causes suffering. These people were suffering and they needed somebody to suffer with. They needed a friend. Okay. Make it that what you will. I just know that I, she's, she can go be. I'm not attached any longer to getting her good opinion of me. The one reason I wanted that friendship was because I'm crazy <laughs> and crazy people need a handler, <laughs> a reality check person, you know, somebody who is close so that I could say, ah, uh, is this all, is this right or wrong? How do, how do normies act? You know, so I got all involved in that. But it's okay. I messed it up too. I don't, I, I don't even know why I'm continuing to confess this to you. I'm supposed to be reading. <laughs> but I'm still mournful because this person's an interesting person. She passes my not an arc test because she really observes people. She observes others very well. And can have a two-way conversation about that and she's into self-improvement working on her spiritual life or not her spiritual life she's just healing she's just on the healing path and, and because of that similarity I'm like yay, yay but then all of that heinous of mine was too much She's a very strong person. Shit, I might want to drag her down. <laughs> but that also causes me to run the risk of doing that collapse that we talked about a couple chapters ago. About what is it called when you're so strong so long and then you're given the opportunity to have somebody share your burden and then you become incapable.
I would have found out a word for for how I feel and for who this other person that I'd like to have made friends with Sigma females or Sigma men totally Sigma <laughs> which means that it's quite alright if we didn't click or if we haven't clicked yet it's really nice to have knowledge that somebody around in my life with some with some real good intelligence and awareness and, and that's awesome that's awesome self-awareness is so needed so needed yeah. I'm preaching to my daughter my granddaughter I haven't preached to my daughter on here in a while oh, let me get back into character ordinary human brain had not if the ordinary human brain had not possessed a special capacity of adaptation to an ever-changing environment building up an ever-changing conditioned reflexes and patterns of responses and submitting for the time being when further resistance seemed useless mankind would never have survived to become the dominant animal what the hey the ordinary human brain had not possessed a special capacity of adaptation to the changing environment if it had not a special capacity to build up ever-changing conditioned reflexes and patterns of responses and if it had not possessed a special capacity for submitting for the time being when further resistance seemed useless then mankind would have never survived to become the dominant animal. The person with deficient powers of adaptation and excessive rigidity, rigidity in behavior or thought is always in danger of breaking down, entering a mental hospital, or becoming a chronic neurotic. So said William Sargent in Battle for the Mind, and Although there are plenty of people prepared to take issue with this particular version of the causes of mental illness, notably psychiatrists such as Thomas Zazz and Ronald Lang, Lying, Lying, okay, and their followers who maintain that this sickness is within society and the insane individual is in reality the only real sane one who won't adapt to that sickness. Oh, a little truth in that. Says me. Say is, says, says, says me. There is a basic truth in the fact that the ability to adjust to a changing environment is the secret to survival. Therefore, according to Brown in Techniques of Persuasion, it is far from surprising that it is those designed statistically normal, I'm sorry, it is far from surprising that those designated statistically normal who are most likely to take on the attitudes that are prevalent within, er, prevalent in their social milieu and drop them in favor of others when the milieu changes. Like fashion. In line with his old belief described in chapter 2, or his own belief described in chapter 2, that all individuals have a deeply have deeply entrenched attitudes derived from personal character traits and more superficial attitudes which are alterable according to current climate of opinion. Brown concludes that we are more rigid and more malleable than has hitherto been supposed. Rigid in our basic personality pattern and malleable within certain limits determined by basic pattern in our peripheral personality, whose various roles alter as we move from one group to another. He commented that such normal adaptation to group norms was a saving grace for some in Korea. As long as the morale of the group of prisoners remained intact, the Chinese were virtually powerless to influence. They had to concentrate on breaking down the group. While some attitude changes may be superficial or 
while some attitude changes may be crucial for survival, a man who believes that his environment has been adversely affected by the innovation of the motor car would not survive long if he attempted to ignore its existence, particularly when crossing roads. Others may be maladaptive. If it is normal to change attitudes, it is, however, considerably less advantageous to do so in some circumstances rather than others. But because we tend to believe in the concept of autonomy, we may not realize quite to the degree to which our attitudes change, I'm sorry, to the degree which our attitude changes or our behavior are not the product of our own decision making. Psychological research has revealed that the power of forces that are way beyond normal conscious control, and yet which can have, in some instances, far-reaching destructive effects. I think we should quit, 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 quit. So next up would be an attitude. All right. Thank you.